Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for F1 Manager 22. This is a brand new game that just came out, although I guess technically it doesn't come out for a couple days as of the time I'm recording this. But if you pre-order, you get a little bit of early access for a few days, so yeah, take that however you will. But uh, brand new game. Uh, in fact, I don't know that have this, I guess this is the first in the series, right? Have they, I don't think they've had an F1 manager before now. Now this is very similar to Motorsport Manager in a lot of ways. If you are, have seen that on my channel or have seen that around before now, but, uh, I'm pretty excited to get into this. I'm hoping this, this will be a lot of fun. Uh, so let's get right into it. Alright, here we are in the game. As you can see, I did play a little bit with Mercedes just to try and get kind of a feel for how the game was going to flow. Um, and kind of familiar myself, familiarize myself with a little bit of the, the menus and stuff like that. I did one race, that was it. I didn't do anything else. Uh, so there's still a lot for me to learn, a lot for me to understand. Uh, so bear with me. So this is practically a first look for all intents and purposes because I kind of skipped through a lot of things just to try and understand the menus themselves. But before I get into the game much further, I would like to ask if you are brand new to the channel especially, but uh, if you're enjoying this type of series, enjoying this type of content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, consider becoming a channel member. That helps out the channel a lot. Uh, hit that bell notification if you want to know when these videos are going to go live. I'm going to try and do one of these videos every day for the first couple of weeks, and then I'll probably drop it back to an every other day type of setup just, just to kind of pace myself a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, any, any support for the channel, any comments, anything like that, really, really helps the channel grow a lot, and I really very, very much appreciate it. But let's get right into this. What we're going to be doing, uh, you guys probably already know from the title of the video as well as the uh, the thumbnail, I'm going to be playing a little bit of a worst to first, if you will. Uh, currently, as of right now, and this is no judgment on anybody because these teams are real. These are real teams, real people, uh, at least initially, uh, until I start recruiting some some uh, some other uh, individuals. I'm sure those. I'm sure all the people that are like. 20 year old that I go scout and pick up. I don't know if all of those are real necessarily. One, Let's go ahead and just watch this. Minds and nations, where the 20 best drivers in the world come together to take on some of the world's most historic circuits. And that legacy continues today. The 2021 championship was thrilling from start to finish. And 2022 is set to be even better. New regulations will usher in an age of pioneering changes New driving talent alongside returning champions will be dueling it out to the bitter end. The pressure will be on the team principals in the upcoming season as they manage their drivers, their cars and the whole team to push to victory. This is not a challenge for the faint-hearted. This is Formula One. Very cool. Now, little caveat, I don't know anything about Formula One racing. Uh, the only thing I know anything about I played Motorsport Manager for a little bit. Uh, let me go ahead and stop the audio for now. Um, so, yeah, I don't know anything. I, I went and looked up just to see kind of where some of these teams were actually as of right now. And um, kind of, because truth be told, I want to play as the worst team. Uh, and maybe that maybe I don't need to be too kind because they are <laughs> technically the worst team. In fact, if you go look at the rankings for F1 right now, they are in last place. Uh, and that's going to be this Williams team over here. Um, this is a legendary name in F1, winning nine constructors' championships in their heyday. The Williams family sold the team in 2020, and the 2021 season saw them fighting well from start to end. They finished eighth overall, thanks to some incredible performances by George Russell in his last year as a Williams driver. In 2022, Williams have Nicholas Latifi and new signing Alex Albon, returning to F1 after a year away to make up their driver team. The pressure is on for them to up their performance this season and push their way back towards those midfield places. All right, so there you go. Like I said, Williams team currently in last place in real life. Uh, they're effectively in last place here. Their season objective is ninth, which is, which is the lowest of all of these. I'm not going to click through all of them because it'll start the audio. But these are real teams. These are real drivers as of right now. These are real teams. Um everything i mean this is this is it uh, now again as we continue to play through the game just like in football manager um as time goes by a lot of the real people will move on and we'll, we'll start having probably regens and things like that starting to step in but initially real people uh, i'm impressed that they got all the licensing for this i mean these are 
the likenesses on, on these people are legit. Like, this is it. This is pretty cool. Um, but uh, I did set on the settings. There's this option to set uh, to turn off licensed audio. So I'm hoping by turning off licensed audio, I won't have any other like issues with showing these teams and showing these logos and things like that. Hopefully, we'll find out. If I start getting copyright issues, then I guess I don't get to make money off this series. But I'm assuming if they've got a licensed audio toggle for people to be able to stream this, that they expect people to be able to show this off. So we'll deal with that as time goes by. But yeah, here we go. Williams team. Like I said, here's all the, I mean, all the teams are here. Mercedes, uh, Red, Bear, uh, Red Bull, uh, Ferrari, McLaren. Um, who is this? This is uh, Alpine. Okay, there we go. See, Al Alpine, I'm sorry. Uh, and then we've got Aston Martin. We've got Alpha Tari. Alpha Tari. Alpha Romeo. Alfa Romeo, who actually is pretty good. Uh, they were they were up there in the um, in the test run that I did. They were, they were like sixth place, I think, fifth or sixth place, something like that. They they did pretty good. And then we have I think Haas racing down here at the end, which is the only American all American team. I thought about playing as them, but they're actually better than the Williams team. And I wanted to play as again that worst to first, which is what I did with uh, Motorsport Manager. If you ever want to go back and watch that, if you get hooked on this game and want to kind of Wet your appetite a little bit. Go watch my Motorsport Manager run. It's got tons of seasons there. And we started in the lowest league. We started in the third league there, or whatever you want to call it, um, and worked our way up to the top one with the same team. And I, ironically, I think our logo was very similar to this, except instead of Williams Racing, it said Breuer Racing, but I think the colors were almost identical. So it's almost like this team was made for us. It's perfect. But here we are. Uh, we do have a low starting budget. Um, we are only expected to be ninth place, although more than likely we'll be 10th, if I had to guess. Um, Long-term objectives to be a points contender, so just get some points. But we definitely want to try and build this team up to being the best of the best. And I don't know how long that's going to take. I don't know how easy that's going to be. This is never played this game before, but it looked like a fun challenge. So we're definitely up for it. Uh, I mean, our car performance is the worst. Our driver performance is almost the worst. Our staff performance pretty bad. And then our headquarters is, is seventh. So, hey, we at least got that going for us, I guess. Um... But like I said, we're definitely going to be changing out a lot of things. The way we did this in, um, that team's been around since 1978, and they're from the UK. So there you go. They finished eighth last year in the constructors, 15th as a driver. So there were, I guess, five worst drivers. Um, they've had nine constructors champions wins and seven driver championships wins. That's actually kind of impressive. But anyway, all I was going to say is that uh, similar to how we've done this in the past with Motorsport Manager, the whole point of this is to really just overhaul everything. Just get rid of all the staff, get rid of all the drivers as soon as we can, and get youngsters. Get really young guys who have tons of potential that we can pay little bits of money to. Uh, that way we can spend all the money we can on the car and... Um, and then hopefully let them grow. And because they gain experience in this game, they can gain experience. You can give them uh, points and stuff like that, kind of like a kind of a point assignment as they as they gain experience. But uh, and they gain experience faster if they're got you know got a lot of potential things like that. So we'll dig into that a bit more. And first year's expectations, tenth place. If we get if we get uh, any lower than tenth, I'll be disappointed. That was a little bit of a bad joke because there's no <laughs> lower than tenth. But no, tenth place is what we're expecting. We're going to breeze through this first season, really focusing on the car. We want to set a strong foundation of improving parts in the car, and then maybe in a season or two, we can start actually doing something, right? So let's go ahead and get into this. I don't know if there's going to be a little audio here, but let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, I guess we'll put my name in here. I am going to turn off first-time guidance just because I did go through all that on my own. Uh, if you guys are interested, um, by all means, but I'm going to hopefully turn that off and hopefully we're going to be okay. All right, so there's no no blurb there. Okay, that's fine. Um, so this is this is a screen. Honestly, looks fairly similar to again Motorsport Manager. I don't. These aren't made by the same people, as far as I know. Unless they might be made by some similar people, as far as like that came over from Motorsport Manager to help create this. I honestly have no idea. It wouldn't surprise me if some of the Motorsport Manager guys joined onto this team to help them make this game because they had a lot of experience in that area. But there are similarities, which there should be because it's an F1 type of game. But um, Definitely, um, I mean, there's a whole concept of recruit your drivers, recruit your staff, recruit your, um, you know, not just your, your um, let's go look at the staff here, not just your technical people, but also your engineers that are going to help your drivers in the during the race. Um, 
and then also building up the car. The car is, is really what it's all about in this game, just like in Motorsport Manager. Um, we do have a board, which, I mean, I'm sure they're medium with us right now. Hopefully we can get ninth place and not make them unhappy, but you got to do what you got to do. Um, again, really minimal money, unfortunately, compared to a lot of the other teams. So we're going to have to try and do the best we can with what we've got and work our way up to some... Uh, some better money at some point in the future. Um, I don't know exactly how long these episodes are going to go. My goal is, similar to Motorsport Manager, is to do a race per episode. So all the pre-stuff pre, pre -stuff up to the race and then do the race as the end, last part of the episode. And then that will be an episode. It could take an hour long. These may be hour long episodes. I really don't know. We will learn that together. But let's get into this. Here's the welcome to the new team. Um, definitely want to check our inbox regularly. No big deal. Cars. So, so here's, yeah, I don't even know where to start. Um, first things first, let's. Let's see here. Do you have any, are we able to see any sort of a potential development for you? Because I kind of want to just go recruit some really cheap people. Now, we might not be able to do much with these people. Yeah, we can't break these contracts right now. So something, like, somebody like this, he's 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 in it for a while with us. Uh, what about your contract? Yeah, three years. We we really can't afford to break these contracts, so we may have to deal with who we've got for the first couple of years. Yeah, four-year contract. Goodness, all these guys have long contracts. Did they just set them up with that, or is this literally what they have in real life right now? I actually don't know. Um, we can always increase the team size. For example, Mercedes right now has a team size of ten because they have a better. Um, headquarters set up so that's that's pretty good to know that we can obviously increase that uh scouting team how's our scouting team looking we only got two scouts again you can have more i'm assuming as you improve your scouting stuff pit crew training co focus we can change the training focused oh there we go um gotcha i mean balance i think seems fine for right now I mean, we do want to start scouting some people. How about our drivers? What are their contracts looking like? Okay, so this has only got a one-year contract. We could break this one pretty easily if we want to grab us a a good um, a good youngster, if you will. Although this guy's 26 years old. He's not super old, to be fair. But his growth potential is only average. So I would definitely like to start scouting some new drivers. Um, again, similar. I'm going to follow the similar pattern that we did with Motorsport Manager. Get young drivers and work away from that. Now, his contract, we really can't break anytime soon. He's going to be sticking around with us for a bit longer. Um, and then what about our backup driver? Growth potential average as, we use, as well. We could break his contract as well. So, yeah. So, we have a couple drivers that we can break contracts for. I'm not too worried about that. Honestly, um... I mean, is this overall rating where they're at right now today, or is this overall rating where they could be? Honestly, I don't know if we'll know until we just start scouting some people. Well, who's the highest rated free agent? 30 years old, 67. I'm going to scout you just because I'm curious. Uh, let's see, we've got detailed and standard. Well, we don't need to worry about detail scouting because we don't care about the contract and buyouts or anything like that with these guys that are free agents, right? So I think all we care about is that. Honestly, I can't imagine someone who's a 67 at 30 years old is going to be worth our time. 21-year-old, however, might be. So patience for negotiation, open negotiation. So let's, let's scout you standard. And then we've got one more scout left for now. 22-year-old, let's go with you. I mean, I'm assuming with these guys having real faces, these guys are real people. But is there going to be a point where we have fake people? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so let's go ahead and scout you. Can we queue up scouts? Okay, no, we cannot. So we have to wait for those to come back. Uh, let me go grab a 16-year-old. Like, I'm just curious. Is this actually a show in a picture... Like, is this guy, does this guy exist in real life? Somebody will have to tell me. 
Got a good first name for racing, right? Um, all right, so there we go. Uh, we'll get a couple guys scouted. We'll work our way through that, and hopefully we get us a couple good long-term drivers uh, to upgrade our current guys. So other than that, I think the next thing to do really is to go look at our cars. And really, the big thing for us is to see where our cars stack up with the grid average. That's, that's really what I want to look at. Um, can I just see the full team? No. I just wanted to see the full team. Okay, so this is a grid average. We'll just have to look through the two different cars. I'm assuming they're about the same. Uh, what are we worse on? Let's see. I want to compare. Where did I see that before? Show rank on grid. There we go. So rank on grid. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here for us to look through. I guess car performance is just general car performance, and we can start with that. I mean, we're, we're 19th on literally everything here, right? Now, do our engineers, similar to FM, or F to Motorsport, uh, do they... So this is head of aerodynamic design. Okay, so it's going to be this guy up here. So they do have a rating for various uh, parts, right? Various pieces. So this guy's best is side pods. Um, he's pretty average on everything, to be fair. But maybe we start with side pods if that's going to give us a boost somewhere. So side pods does... There we go. Uh, actually, that's not what I'm looking for. Side pods helps with engine cooling primarily, as well as a little bit of, I think, I want to say cornering, if I remember correctly. We'll go back and we'll start looking at car parts development. Do we have any current projects? We do not. So new project. Uh, we want to design a new project. We can't do any research yet. That's fine. So we want to look at side pods potentially. Uh, does it tell us what his rating is on here? No, it does not. But it will help with top speed, acceleration, and engine cooling, which we are in last place for all of those, quite to be fair. So side pods does not seem like a bad place to start if that's his best overall. Um, so this is where we can add in some extra computer hours, which we have a limit on for the year, I guess, is how it, it works. And then we also have a limited of wind tunnel hours for, for the year, I suppose. Um, oh, wow. This will actually bump us up a couple spots. That's that's pretty cool, actually. So I'm going to say car 2 performance, but I'm assuming is like one step behind car 1 performance and everything. So we definitely want to try to improve this where we can. I mean, I definitely would like to put some, some computer hours into this, I think. Computational fluid dynamics. One million hours of computer simulation. Wow. Like, I don't know how much we really want to put into this, right? Um, I mean, it's going up a little bit, but not significantly. How much would it take to go up a whole spot here? Probably more than I want to spend. Yeah, we're, we're not going to go up that high. We don't get up to 16th in any of this. All right, so we're not going to go up that high. So it's really kind of, I'm not sure how relevant it is to spend too much time on this. But we do gain a little bit here, right? So it definitely is going up. I don't know. We might just put a couple things in here. Three and three, point three and three. And we're getting a gain out of it. I mean, it's, it's better than it was. So we'll start with that. And... And maybe that's a mistake. Maybe you want to save that for later in the process. I want to go for probably just overall race performance. Which does lower engine cooling. Puts us in first place in drag reduction? Really? That seems insane. Does give us a big jump at airflow as well. Uh, 
19th, 20th. I'm actually kind of probably going to just balance these. See what, what's a good balance here. Because okay, it's first on engine cooling. Minimal on the airflow. Which a lot of the airflow stuff we can get from other pieces. This, I mean, engine cooling is literally from, primarily, I think, from these side pods, right? There's, a, I think there's one other thing that adds to engine cooling. I also just go balance. But balance is only 17th. Honestly, I, I kind of like the idea of just being really good at something. Still get to 17th on these two. Uh, so we do get a little bit of improvement over, overall in airflow. This is, this is tempting as well, though. Yeah, it would be less engine cooling. Why not? Let's be good at something. Feels like a reasonable, interesting idea. And then we can like kind of work our way through this. I mean, if we improve engine cooling now and then we improve something else later, I mean, eventually we're going to have a better car. So let's go with that. And then we want to, we don't have a lot of engineers, but we do want to go with an intense development here. It's going to be very expensive, but the reason we want to go with intense because this is going to be like a, it's going to give us the most experience towards this type of part. So then maybe we can do a follow-up part, which is ultimately a better overall design. I mean, we only lose a, save a couple days for each of these. I might just put half my engineers on this and then I can do maybe another part, potentially, if it lets me. So we'll do like half and half, have two parts going at the same time. 40 days is a long time to wait, but I think something like this, I mean, it's expensive, but that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a car part to put on my car today. I'm looking for a car part for the future. So we're going to try this. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe it's not. We'll find out. And then can we design another one? So that was side pods. Um, what else are we bad in? Or what else is our guy good at? I mean, his rear wing or chassis are both 74s. Now, some of these parts that we, we can only do during the off season. Um, so we can't develop literally every piece. We can only develop certain parts right now. So chassis or I think I said rear wing. Chassis helps with top speed and as well as cooling. Yeah, so the only two that help with cooling are the chassis and the rear wing. So, which one of these are we the lowest on? I mean, we're blowing both of them, quite frankly. I'm kind of thinking towards rear wing only because I'd like to see how the side pods have fixed engine cooling before we start worrying about the chassis because that might change how we do that. But rear wing, yeah, why not? So I'm going to do kind of the same thing, 3.3 and 3. This pumps us up quite a bit on the high speed. That would be nice. And then we want to be... I mean, really... Honestly, top speed would be kind of ideal to really bump that up as high as possible. Now, low speed, we're going to go worse on. Doesn't really help as much over here as I was thinking it would. What about okay, if we did low speed? Yeah, it's not really helping as much as I want. Optimized aerodynamics doesn't really do much. Balanced. I mean, it helps our acceleration a little bit. I don't know. I'm just going with high speed. Sure, why not? Gives us a little bit more acceleration. Gives us more high speed overall for cornering. Let's just focus. I, I want to be very focused, I guess. And maybe that's a bad move. But it just feels like, let's do something like that. We're going to do other half of our engineers, and we're also going to do intense here. Oof. It's extremely expensive. But I feel like we've got to be doing something. We've got to be aggressive here on the development side. All right, so that's that. Um, so two, two parts coming in. We've got a race coming up in 11 days. I mean, that's that. Our monthly balance. So we are... Oh, oh, uh, facilities. Anything we want to do with relation to facilities. I mean, having more scouts, because it's kind of critical for us right now, would not be a bad idea. Alternatively, having more... Uh, getting the helipad built. 
gives us a little bit more um, payout on our sponsors, which gives us more money. Money is important. That's one thing we did with uh, Motorsport Manager. Similar, again, there's so many similarities here is that we built the helipad up as soon as possible. We had like the best helipad because we needed that extra money coming in to help us build up to what we what we wanted. So honestly, I think we will build a helipad. Increasing our team attractiveness would be useful. So some of that stuff. Uh, the tour center could be useful to give us a little bit more money coming that way. So we'll come back to some of that. Unless we can also build a scouting department right now. I'm going crazy on the money right now, but I just feel like we've got to be aggressive here. All right, that's that. Let's see how that works. Uh, we're going to hit continue, and that's going to... Basically, this game's going to skip along kind of like, again, Motorsport Manager until the next thing comes up that we care about. Um, and then it'll stop us and let us know what that is. So we'll just zip along here. Response required. So we've got key development, car development key staff. So we've got our two guys. We checked them out a little bit. Sponsor obligations. Go to sponsor obligations. So we, so this is one of the things that we have to do, which is, um, there's certain, well, literally what it sounds like obligations that we have to fulfill for our sponsors to be happy with us. Um, so for example, we actually have to build or create merchandise for our sponsor, which, um, you know, is uh, kind of a, I don't want to say a detriment to us, but it, it costs us money up front to build, create this merchandise. Now, we do get income per race because of it, but I think ultimately, yeah, so I think ultimately we make a little bit of money off of this, but because we have such a, a huge upfront cost, you know, you have to consider that. Uh, race day factory event, so apparently we have to do a, event at our factory on race day, which does mean manufacturing is paused during that time period. So something to consider. Uh, just a regular, I guess, factory event. So we have one race day factory event, I guess, and one regular factory event, I guess, if I, when I'm reading that right. Again, car manufacturing is paused. We have to have some race hospitality, which means our pit crew will be decreased um, on each race day. And then a memor memorabil memorabilia room event. Looks like we have 24 days of that. So just, just different obligations that we have to deal to be able to have our current um, sponsors. Now, there are caps, by the way, on um, each year that, that all the teams in F1 have a cap on certain things that they can spend. I don't think we're going to come close to the cap anytime soon. So I don't think that's anything we need to worry about. But it's just something to consider that we can't just go spend half a billion dollars on car development. There, there is a limit for each team each year. Um... Improve driver morale, improve staff morale for 10,000 bucks. Honestly, I don't really care about morale this, this first season in at all. It will matter later when we're really pushing for stuff. This first season in, we're just going to settle and accept what we what we get. So I, even though it's only 10,000 bucks, I'm actually going to deny this. Uh, it's $10,000 we can spend on something else for right now. Normally, I would accept that. 10,000 bucks for a little bit of morale improvement is usually a good thing. But in this case, I don't think it matters that much. Although the increased staff morale might have helped our development of our car parts, to be fair. But I think we'll be okay. So let's go ahead and continue. Construction complete on the helipad. Nice. That is that is awesome. So we do have a little bit of monthly upkeep. But we're going to start getting a little bit more payout from our sponsors. And our team attractiveness... We actually have team attractiveness now. It was zero. Now it's 10. Um, I do think we want to actually start... I want to get this thing maxed out as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, another thing that we didn't have to deal with Motorsport Manager is this whole refurbishment idea where the condition of our buildings will start to deteriorate over time and we have to refurbish them to keep them in tip-top shape. So a little extra expense that we didn't have to deal with in that other game, but something to think about but i know i think we're gonna just we're gonna keep pushing the helipad as high as it possibly can go because i do think if we can get that maxed out that is going to be a big deal for us really maximize our payouts as much as humanly possible what little payouts they might actually be all right post barring test results obviously we know we're bad on everything no big surprise there we're continuing to develop our parts right now uh, scouting is complete. Nice. So scouting level is standard. Growth potential is only average. So I don't think this is a guy that we're looking for. Uh, growth, there you go. This is a guy we're looking for. Now his aggression is average. Okay, that's fine. But growth potential high, that is really, really good for us. Um,
we compare him to you're not the oh yeah you're one of the ones i can i can get drop so he's definitely not as good as this guy to be fair but he his growth potential being high is really really not useful what about our backup i think this is our backup Um, I mean, honestly, he's going to be better than a lot of these guys. I kind of want to bring him in as a brain driver. Just let him get as much XP as possible. Yeah, I think, I think we're just going to grab it. Why not? We won't know until we, do, we, until we know, you know? We won't know until you know, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Um, current link, contract length. Honestly, I'd like to get as many seasons as possible. So can we get you for five seasons? We really don't know what his... We have no idea what his expected salary will be. Maybe that's why we need to do a little bit more thorough scouting of him. Because he's got very high new patients, but I, I don't even know where to start. I guess, you know what, if we if we fail on him, then it's not the end of the world. We can... We can... Uh, We, we'll just know, right? We'll know at that point. How much are we paying this guy? Just out of, just to kind of put it into perspective. That's not what I want. I want to go back home. Uh, we're paying you. Contract. Oh, 630000 That's his annual salary. Okay. Okay. So... I honestly don't know what this guy's expecting. So I guess we just have to propose something and then we'll figure out what his, he's upset about once we get him back. And if we fail, like I said, we'll know. Okay, interesting. He didn't like the long contract. He definitely didn't like the salary. But it's only one down arrow. So maybe... He's considering retiring soon. You're going to retire at 21 years old. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Maybe we should be going for 16 year olds. So he doesn't need either of those. He's okay with that. He just needs a little bit higher salary. So I don't know. We'll drop it down to that. 21 years old, you want to retire soon, huh? He's still not happy. Again, I'm a, I don't know how to read this. Patience is only high right now. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going way off on salaries and things. All right, salary's looking good. He just really doesn't like the contract length. Well, if you're if you're going to be less than three seasons, I don't think I want you. So I think we're done with that. I need somebody for the long term. So let's go back to the rating, and we're going to scroll down here. And we're going to scout somebody else, not the thirty year old. Uh, we just checked you. Just checked you. Honestly, let's just go with the bottom. Let's find us a sixteen year old. That's uh, let's see. How do I? Do? There we go. What's the highest rated 16-year-old? There we go. Oliver. 65 for a 16-year-old is pretty good. Uh, standard scouting. What about 17-year-old? Or we can go with Jack here. Are there any 17-year-olds higher than Jack? No. There is an 18-year-old who's a 71, though. So we might pursue him. Theo here. All right. Well, again, learning. So we'll see. All right, to the Riz weekend. Important email. Race prep.
So there's a few things we've got to check in preparation for the race. So we'll go to race preparation. Uh, we do need to check our performance targets here in just a moment, uh, which I guess we'll do now. So here's here's what our sponsors want us to do, as well as the potential reward, right? Uh, there is no negative if we don't get these other than we don't get the money, right? So we're expected to qualify 15th. We just need a driver, right? Oh no, 15th with both drivers. That's going to be tough. That's actually going to be tough. Uh, they expect us to be at least have one driver in 15th place. So something to think about. And then they want us to qualify 15th or higher in three races in a row with both drivers. Again, going to be tough, worth a lot of money. Here's the extra little add-on that we can do, though. We can do this little guarantee, right? We can say, oh, we're going to hit... Um, reach round three of qualifying, let's say. Or we're going to reach round two of qualifying. Um, so these actually are... Um, will cost us. I'm going to have to spend 23,000 bucks, but if I went, if I actually get it, we'll get 95,000 bucks back. So we can guarantee certain things. Uh, yeah, there's no way we hold the fastest lap at all. So we're not going to do that. Um, finish position streak, finish four races in a row with at least one driver. So if we thought we could do this one, honestly, four races, maybe, but we're, we're, we're not going to do any of those. We're not going to do any guarantees right now because actually I don't think we're going to be able to get any of these right now. If we start getting them, well, then I'll have a better understanding of how our performance of our car is going to be over the long term. But for right now, we're going to be lucky to get any of these basic ones. Not worried about guarantees at all. So we check that. Uh, there's our driver overview. Um, car parts, nothing, nothing new here. So that is that to the race weekend. By the way, graphically, this stuff, this game is pretty cool. I, I'm really, really impressed by some of the graphics in this game. Welcome to the archipelago of Formula One. Bahrain might have a small land footprint, but it's showing its big spirit right now in the grandstands. Either way, it's time for another fantastic weekend of Grand Prix racing. The Bahrain International Circuit is a challenging track, and the cars routinely have to brake from high gear to low to take the narrow turns. With the need for downhill braking, the risk of locking up is one drivers will need to manage. It's all about focus and balance to get victory here. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs, and nothing is certain at this stage. There's nothing like a race weekend in Formula One. All right, cool. Should be a fun first race. I say fun. I mean, I'm not expecting hardly anything, but, you know, we'll do what we can. So we do have track acclimatization. We got car part knowledge, all that kind of stuff. We got setup confidence. So similar to, again, Motorsport Manager, uh, as we do run through practice sessions, we can change the uh, setup a little bit to really tune that in and, you know, get this as high as possible to give us some little extra, extra bonuses for the race itself. So we got performance bonuses that we can try and cap out based on how our setup and all that other stuff is is going. Um, again, normally I would manage the practices and stuff like that because I would at least a, a session or two because I really want to get that maximum setup because, I mean, the computers can only do so much. You really need the human touch to be able to min-max that to the, po the, to the top possible. We're just not in a position right now to be able to do that. Uh, if I thought we could actually get our um sponsor objectives or even some of those stretch objectives some of those uh guarantees if we made some setup changes then maybe but at this point in time i'm expecting last place that is what it is so we're just gonna go ahead and simulate uh pretty much a lot of this early stuff for this for probably a, pretty much simulating everything for this first season so i apologize if you're not going to get to see some of the practice and qualifying stuff this first season through but we will do that as soon as our car starts to become at least somewhat relevant and we can really start climbing the ladder as we proceed to qualifying and the fight for pole begins. For those teams who made the most of free practice, they'll be heading into qualifying full of confidence, knowing that they can carry today's momentum into the upcoming session. Does practice make perfect? Well, for one standout driver, it will make for pole. So here we are, ready to resume. I'll show you guys these little clips just for this first time through, but I'll probably start skipping them once we get a little bit further along. Uh, Ferrari, uh, looking the best. Ferrari, Red Bull, top four. Makes sense. There's Alfa Romeo. I told you. They, they, when I did my t test run, that because the only race I ran in the test run was this Bahrain one, Alfa Romeo was looking really good. And there's Mercedes in sixth and sevenths. Uh, and then dead last. That's us. Uh, we're about what, 
3.2 seconds behind. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> I'm sitting there doing the math, and it's sitting right next to me. So, you know, we're, we're significantly slower than the top cars, but what we're not significantly slower than are the cars ahead of us. There is a possibility as we continue to develop our car, especially number 18 here, I think we could catch him uh, at some point as we continue to progress and get better. So not impossible for us to start climbing the ladder this season, but expect expect a last place. All right, so track, track acclimatization, 100%. Car part knowledge, only 68%. Setup confidence, not super confident in the setup. Uh, again, if we'd done the practice ourselves, we probably could have bumped that up close to 100%. Uh, but we do get a little bit of performance boost overall, which is nice. 11, honestly, 11.15 is actually impressive. And um, as we uh, as we get better and better in the future, we can get those maxed out. Uh, three of the points comes from track acclimatization. Three of the points comes from car parts knowledge. And then the last uh, nine points comes from your setup, I believe. Is that what it said? Yeah, nine, nine, if you look at the info, 9 and 15 is that. So if we'd maxed this out, we could have probably gotten at least a 13 or 14. But again, this first race, not super important. Looks like it's going to be a clear day all the way through. Uh, we're just going to continue here. We're going to simulate the qualifying again, because again, it doesn't really matter. We're going to be in the last two places. It is what it is. Max Verstappen. Looking pretty fast, my friend. We got, <laughs> we got a long ways to go to catch you. But again, as expected... We are down here in last place, so we did not meet our sponsor objective. Not a surprise at all. Here we are, folks. We're back for another day of scintillating F1 action. It's race day. Williams had a good performance in qualifying. Now they'll be eager to demonstrate that they can have an even better race. Aston Martin did a good job during qualifying, and they're pretty much where everyone expected them to be on the grid. Now it's up to them to defy expectations during the race itself. And clouds are stretching across the sky tonight, which means that teams and drivers alike will be nervously watching the weather radar. And there's going to be a lot for the teams to handle. So will the drivers and their cars be able to cope with the pressure? Let's find out right here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. All right, very cool. We're about to get off on this one. Let's go. Cloudy, like I said. Um, nothing there we need to look at. Sponsors, again, we knew we weren't going to get that. We're not going to get any of these. So it is what it is. Would be nice to get some extra money someday. We'll get there. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the race. Now, this is where we set up our strategies. Um, it doesn't matter a whole lot uh, right now. Again, like as I said, said before, truth be told, we probably want to go with a pretty safe strategy just to finish the race. We don't, we don't, we're not pushing for anything. Um, what I might do is actually, I might let you go with this slightly more aggressive strategy using the medium tires instead of the highs uh, in the middle, the mid here with the uh, uh, soft tires on each side. Not highs, hards. <laughs> I was like, that is, why did high not sound right? Hard tires, soft, medium, hard. Um, we're going to use the softs on each side and with you, I think. Uh, we can always add a new strategy. We can set up our own strategy if we want. I played around with that a little bit in that first race when I did on my practice session. Um, but yeah, for now, we're just going to go with one of these built-in ones. And then for you, we're going to take, we're going to go with B. That way you guys are pitting at different times. I, I do like that. That's what I used to do in Motorsport Manager, and it seems like it works for the best. Um, we got to manage fuel properly. And I actually ran out of fuel in my test race with literally half a lap to go. That's how close I was cutting the fuel. Felt a little dumb, but mostly because I was misreading how the fuel was represented. I, I just misread the the uh, icon or the uh, the information that was showing there. Um, not so much that there was a problem with what I was doing. If I'd read it properly, I would have not gone as aggressive for as long as I did. So, but yeah, two different strategies I think is going to be good for us. Let's go ahead and start the race. Cloudy skies tonight, with the drivers now having taken position on the grid. Here we have Alexander Albon. They're in the back half of the pack so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. Next up for the team, it's Latifi. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. Will their hard work pay off today? Hard work. <laughs> hard work being in last place. Here we go with the Bahrain Grand Prix. 
and it's lights out, and away we go. I'll watch a little bit of this just so you guys can kind of see it because it's kind of cool, but we will speed this up here momentarily. Let me cut down on the audio a bit. That's getting a little bit loud with the cars, but um, yeah, we'll just we'll just see how these guys are doing. Let me cut this off. So we do have a lot of information here, right? There's a lot to talk to go through. So I'll, I'll go ahead and go through that while we're showing the slower pace here, and then we'll know it, you know, as we're going forward. So we do have um, we got four different things on the left here. So this is kind of just general information of you know where our tires are out, kind of stuff like that. This is where our fuel's at. And this is where our ERS is at. We all have ERS. Uh, that's just part of the race. There's nothing nothing changing that. We've dealt with ERS or a similar type of thing in Motorsport Manager before. Uh, just it's the same type of stuff. Car condition, we can go through the different tabs here. See kind of the temperature of the tires. See how our engines and other things are going. Obviously, if we're able to cool our engine really well, that would be useful. We can also come down here and say avoid curbs as avoid, well as driving in clean air. Both of those will slow us down but make things a little bit safer, a little bit better for us in the long run. I'm probably not going to touch those right now. We might deal with those at some point. We can also see if we've got any damaged car parts from a collision or anything like that. Um, looks like somebody did run wide, so we're going to get a little bit of a highlight here to show that. Was it one of ours? Maybe. Um, so this is our pit window based on our current strategy. So this will tell us what we're going to be putting on next for our tires, when we're expected to pit, which is 14 laps from now, and then, you know, kind of how far away the pit entry is, as we can see that there. Um, we've got our driver. We can tell him to hold up cars, don't fight his teammate, things like that. We can, um, we can check out the timings of different um, sections here, obviously. Uh, as we get better and better, that might become more relevant. Uh, different telemetry information, which, you know, nifty i don't know if it's super critical for us to look at right now but it's cool to look at um but yeah like i said back here we can definitely we can similar to again motorsport manager we can change how aggressive we race uh if we want to be really aggressive increase our lap times but also kind of wear down our tires faster we have that option same thing with fuel this is what i this is how i ran out of fuel with the mercedes team when i did my practice run uh, i was really pushing really hard and i just didn't uh I didn't go back to like a conserve or balance quickly enough. Literally half lap. That's all I missed it by. So I wasn't far off. And then there's several different options for ERS strategy here. Uh, an overtake, obviously, what it sounds like. Try to catch the guy in front of you. A defend is try to keep the guy from behind you from catching up or passing you. A deploy, if my understanding is, literally just dump your ERS as fast as you possibly can. Um, so it's actually going to give you a really good, you know, lap time that maybe but definitely lower your overall uh, drain, um, ERS, how much you have left, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, how many megajoules you have left. Neutral literally just says, if I gain a megajoule over the lap, course of the lap, I'm going to spin a megajoule over the course of the lap. Literally just keep it as, as what it sounds like, neutral. So you are still using it. You're still pushing uh, from time to time, but you also got moments of harvesting, if you will. Uh, whereas harvest by itself literally is, I need to build up maximum... Uh, um, ERS so that I can maybe maybe you do a little bit of harvesting so that you because you're planning on doing overtake or a deploy or something of that nature so that's kind of how those work and we can set those for both drivers independently however we want uh, but that's that so uh, let's go ahead and jump into I like that we're actually we're not in last place yes let's go ahead and start speeding things up we can go up to sp speed 2 with uh, and still see the graphic if we want which is kind of fun but with a 57 lap race uh, what we're really wanting to do is speed this up a lot. Actually, before I do that, I will show you that we can see different views, which is, I think, really awesome. Like, this is cool. This is really cool to be able to kind of really feel like you're sitting in there. Check the guy behind you. Like, this is... They did a good job on this game, graphically. But, more than likely, we're going to be in this view a lot, quite frankly. Because we've got to speed through these. We can't sit here all day. So, I'm just going to go ahead and go up to speed 16, I think is the highest. Yes, it is. And we're just going to let these guys do their thing. We're not expecting much this first race, although we are currently in 17th and 19th places, which is impressive. Maybe with a little bit of management, maybe I could push up to uh, a 15th place at some point. I say that, though. I mean, we're pretty far behind, honestly. So we're just going to zip through this. And oh, another thing is, once we get close to the, um, the pit lap window, you'll see a little icon show up here, and it'll tell us, hey, you're within this window. Now, the window is literally what it sounds like, a window. It's like... I think three laps on the front end, three laps on the back end, and a lap in the middle. So anytime within that window is a good time to pit, 
you probably want to try and fit, you know, hit the pit at the exact time, but any time within that window still effectively helps our strategy. So we did get a we did get a push up. We're actually up to 16th place right now. We dropped down again. But again, I'm really just going to zip through this first race as quickly as possible. Wow, why is there a Red Bull guy down here in 14th place? They're usually like top four. What is going on? They're having a bad race all of a sudden. Uh, you can't really see it because of my face. Let me just hide this real quick so you guys can see. I'm only covering a little bit of information like weather stuff. I figured of all the things on the screen, that's the stuff that's least critical. So I do want to show my face camera because, I don't know, I like the personal touch, I guess, if you will. Uh, if it bothers you, I apologize, but it is what it is. Uh, but there's very little information up there in the top right corner that is super relevant. So as you can see, actually, we're already in a window for, um, or we're starting our window for Alpin here because he's going to pit earlier since he's going to be moving to uh, hard rubbers. Um, so we've got, we're at the beginning of the window. So we've got a few laps here, right? We're at the very front end. So if we felt like his um, wear and tear was not great, we could pit him earlier. What actually we might do is because we're going to pit him here very soon, I'm actually going to come down here um, and tell him, sorry, wrong one. I'm actually going to come in here and tell him to go attack. Why not? We'll see if we get a little bit of stuff gained because we, he's actually got a lot of uh, rubber left. And if we're going to be pitting him here in the next couple laps, we can really push push it quite a bit here. So we're going to do that. In fact, I think we have a little bit of fuel available as well. I'm going to go ahead and tell him to push on the fuel side as well. Let's just let's just end this before we pit as good as we can. Why not? This is more as a let's see what happens than uh, I actually care what happens because I'm not really trying to do anything with this race. But, you know, just to show it off. And then we're just going to go back to speed 16. But we will keep an eye on this right here. As he gets closer to the screen, or if we get back, if we get down to the yellow, we'll need to pit him a little bit earlier. But I don't think that's going to have to happen. Okay, so uh, this is the optimal pit for our strategy. So we're going to open the pit options, and we are going to put him on. Hards is our strategy. Now, as you can see, we could always change that. We could change our mind. I don't think we have to follow the strategy, right? Um, which is fine. Like I said, it'll conflict and it'll overwrite your strategy. No big deal. But we do want to go ahead and just put them on the, the, the one that's for the strategy. Wait, it's not raining, is it? Oh, I hit the wrong one. <laughs> um, so yeah, there we go. We're going to go on hards. That is part of our strategy. Should all be well and good. And we will pit this lap. We're actually only down to 43%. Technically, we probably could have waited a little bit longer. But we'll go ahead and do it. No reason to go crazy this first first race in. He actually pushed himself up to 13th place with all that pushing before his pit. That's not bad. Now he's going to drop back down again here, obviously, with the pit. But... All right, as soon as we get the options back, we're going to go ahead and put him back down to a standard and a balanced. It's fun while it lasted. All right, so this is optimal for him. We're going to put him on mediums. I uh, probably could have pushed him a little bit more, but that's okay. Yeah, he had, he had a little bit left over there. Now, we're a little bit under on the fuel for him, but I think we'll be okay if we stay on the, the yellow for a bit longer. Now, as far as the strategy is concerned... The strategy takes into account what you plan on doing with that stint. So if I had, as part of the strategy, said, I'm going to push this entire stint, then it would have adjusted the, the stuff a little bit. And I could have actually said, could have seen, maybe I need to put pit for the hard sooner and things like that. Plus, you can see this little graph here, uh, which we can actually see as well up here. Uh, we can see that we were actually a little bit high. Once I started pushing, we did come back down and closer to this line. But we definitely could push a lot more than we have been. And so, so there's probably this next stint, I probably will push quite a bit more just to try and keep it closer to this line than I have than I have been. So something to take into account. We'll keep an eye on things. Looks like we're okay on the laps right now. We're back down in last place, as expected. Nothing nothing too surprising there. 
if we start deviating from that line, I'll start pushing a little bit more. At least on the tires. Looks like we are deviating a little bit. Let's go aggressive. Again, I'm not expecting much of a difference on our overall end results, but might as well practice a bit. And a new position just gained by Williams. Obviously, only top 10 drivers get points, so we're not expecting any points at all. At least not this early in the, this setup. Like we're staying on pace so honestly the pushing is, is actually working pretty good for us i think albin's doing all right i mean he's he's in there he's in there, oh, did run wide there? i mean this guy's so far behind he's barely even in the race anymore i could be more aggressive with the ers don't know if it matters that much honestly we might be able to do a little bit more with albin here um He's very close to the guy in front of him. You know, let's see if we can let's see if we can overtake. Why not? Let's play around with it a little bit. All right, so we're we did as much as we could. We'll go back to neutral. It was worth a shot. Didn't gain any ground, unfortunately, but we're we're close we're behind him. How are we looking here? We're still actually looking really good on the tires, so we're gonna stay on the the push for now. Honestly, we probably could go aggressive at some point, but again, not a huge deal. Uh, Latifi will be put, uh, pitting first uh, based on his current strategy since he's on mediums. So we are in the pit window, as we talked about. Uh, there is no refueling in F1, unlike Motorsport Manager. So Motorsport Manager, we used to refuel as part of our strategy. Well, depending on the rules of the, uh, the championship that we were part of, uh, those can change. Sometimes they said uh, refueling, sometimes they didn't, depending on how things were voted on. But in F1, there is no refueling. So it's all about tires, all about ERS management and the refueling. I mean, you just, you, you, you got to manage your, your fuel the entire race. So we're going to hold off on any sort of pit decision right now. Let this run a little bit longer. We'll get the pop up here in a second that says we're in the, uh, you know, it's time to decide. Both of them are actually within the pit window right now. Albin's up, actually up to 15th spot. 15th would be really nice to be in. Um, how in the world could we go about preserving this? I don't know. I don't think we do much of anything. I don't think we change anything. We're looking good on our strategy here. We potentially could push a little bit more on the fuel. I might wait till we get into the back into the softs before I start pushing anything on the fuel itself. Looks like we're about a lap away from pitting with Latifi. There we go. And we're going to go back to softs. Uh, I don't think there's any car parts that are damaged, so no, we're good there. Yeah. Box, box. Box, box. Come on, Albin. Can you? No, we can't. Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Oh, there you go. There's Red Bull back, back where we would expect them to be. Someone's run wide. All right, we're about to be. Did we not get the top up for him? We didn't. Or did I miss it? Oh, you yeah, actually have some minor damage to your. Oh, yeah. No, no. Okay, I get it. I don't know why we didn't get the pop up. That's okay. Uh, and we're gonna go back to softs, obviously. Um. Unfortunately, both of these were technically used during practice, which is... Oh, no, there we go. There's a hundreds. So we'll do that. Pit this lap. I think someone's run wide. Can Albin get back into this? I have my doubts. But we'll definitely try. And I'm going to keep him pushed. And there's an overtake from Williams. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. And a new position just gained by Williams. Yeah, I just don't don't feel like Alvin's going to be... He's competing with the guy right in front of him right now. 
He's 13 seconds behind 16th place. I don't think there's any way he catches. I mean, we have some fuel available, right? Um, if we look at the car, we have 7.59 laps of fuel left. We've only got six laps of this race left. So I think we can actually go back and push with this. Whereas you've only got a 0.2 lap. I think that's what that's saying, right? Let's see. Can we see info here? Uh, no. Because that's the part that I was having trouble reading with my last time. Um, let's see here. You're at 6.58 laps. I think, I think that's telling us how much cushion we have in fuel. So I think with having a full lap ahead, we can really push this a lot more. In fact, I actually think we could push, we can attack with the tires a bit more as well. We're still kind of above that line. Just barely. I mean, we're so far behind, though. I think best case, we're just going to hold 17th. Yay us. Last lap. Okay, yeah, we're, we're fine. In fact, it's possible we got lapped and... Did we? Let's see. It's 20th. I don't see. Uh, There we are. Yeah, we've gotten lapped already. Well, we weren't dead last with both our racers, so that's good. I mean... Yeah. All of these guys down here are... have been lapped. He's so far behind. He did such a bad job. Such a bad... That's supposed to be our car number one. Like, really? An okay performance for Alex Albon today. But yeah, 17th. I can accept that. This was a mixed performance from Williams today. Some excellent decisions and then some strategies that will need a bit of work. Absolutely. This was very promising. And now the team will be doing everything they can to make good on that promise. With the race wrapped up, the team is ranked in ninth in the constructor standings. The teams now look ahead to the next round, where they'll duel it out in the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. So we are in ninth uh, because of that 17th place finish, even though there's no points at this level um, because of our positioning. Um, we were able to leapfrog Aston Martin ever so slightly. So that's that's good. We'll take it. That's what we're looking for. A little bit of XP for our drivers. Again, I'd really like to get our new drivers in here as soon as possible so that we can maximize our XP. Uh, we didn't use our backup driver for practice, so he did not gain any XP. But again, we don't really care about any of these three drivers right now, so I'm not super worried about the XP. But, I mean, a little bit of money coming back in. So, all is well and good. Helipad upgrade complete. Nice. We'll continue that in the next episode. Well, there we go. About an hour long episode. That's what I expected. Uh, we might be able to speed things up as we get more familiar with the game and kind of push through the in-between race stuff a bit more. Uh, probably between 45 minutes and an hour is my expected runtime for these episodes. So hopefully that's not too crazy, too long for you guys. But I just really wanted to show a race per episode. That's, that's my goal. Um, and so we'll kind of go from there. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below about this new series. And... You know, whether you're interested in watching more of it and things like that, or if you got any suggestions or thoughts or whatever. Um, but I do really appreciate you guys watching. Again, any support you can provide is so, so grateful. I'm so grateful for that. And it really helps the channel out a lot. But again, thank you again for watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.